composer, actually, and has continued to produce concert music that finds frequent performances. The stage, by the way, has been reset now for the piano concerto. To get back to Rocha, he was born on April 18th, 1907, in Budapest. And arriving on stage right now, uh, Mr. Skermerhorn and tonight's guest artist, Leonard Canario. Mr. Canario is taking a bow. And the maestro, of course, is walking up to the podium. Coming up shortly, Concerto for Piano and Orchestra, Opus 31, of the Hungarian composer Miklos Rosha.
Carlos Leonard Panario has performed the Concerto for Piano and Orchestra by Miklos Rocha with the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra under its music director, Kenneth Skermahorn. They're both walking off stage right now. Music, by the way, written for Mr. Panario. Concerto for Piano, Mr. Panario is returning to the stage right now. He's taking another bow. The audience, of course, applauding. You have a maxim, and that's don't get in a rut. What do you mean by that? Well, I've had the opportunity to play a great many different concertos with orchestras. In fact, in a given season, I'll play anywhere from a dozen to 17 or so out of a possible 42. And uh, it's probably a lot harder work that way, but I find it much more stimulating on tour. I don't envy my colleagues who want only to play one or two concertos during the year because I think that they can get in a rut doing that. So um, I, I really am playing a great many different works with orchestra, and uh, it's an exciting experience. Why do these summer people decide on one or two pieces per year? Well, I really don't know. It could be laziness mm -hmm. or perhaps a lack of security, but uh, I, I prefer it this way. I think uh, it makes the musical season far more interesting. You know, you made your debut at the age of 12, which is, of course, fantastic. <laughs> And you, were, you, you performed with the Dallas Symphony. They called you up one day and they said, will you perform it a week from, will you perform the G minor concerto by Greek a week? A minor. A minor, <laughs> pardon me. <laughs> a minor, <laughs> about a week from now. I hate to transpose that to G minor. <laughs> now, when they asked you that, and of course you had never played that before, mm -hmm. What went through your mind? You were only 12. Well, remember, I was 12, and when you're 12, you still have that wonderful, youthful oblivion and difficulty, which, alas, vanishes so soon. I said I would learn it. I, I did. I got the music, and uh, my teacher helped me with it. And six days later, six days. I announced that I was ready and went to Dallas and played it. But did you rehearsals. feel you were taking a chance? Did you feel you were being rash? Again, no, because I was 12. Mm -hmm. You see, later, if I had been older, I probably would have. <laughs> That's right. But I, it was all a game, a lark to me, and it was a wonderful opportunity that I didn't want to pass up. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the Miklos Rocha piano concerto was written for you specifically. Yes. An enormous compliment from a distinguished composer a to have a concerto written for you. This was not a commission, you know. Mm -hmm. He knew my work, and he wrote this work for me and dedicated it to me. And I must say, I, I have to say that working with Ken Skirmerhorn and the uh, Milwaukee Symphony has been an inspiration because they polished it, they, they perfected it in rehearsal, and I was just really very thrilled with, with the beautiful collaboration they gave me. Well, it's a good town, a great orchestra, a great conductor, and I that really, we always brag about Milwaukee and the symphony. And well, you should. <laughs> <laughs> now, when Mr. Russia came to you with this concerto. What were the circumstances there? Well, we're good friends, mm -hmm. and I had sort of teased him. I said, you wrote a wonderful violin concerto for Heifetz, a double concerto for him and Piatigorsky. Don't you like pianists? And uh, I waited and hoped that one day he might write a work. And then a few years later, I heard from Piatigorsky, who was my dearest friend, and what a great loss that was. And he said, Lenny, he was very excited. He said, I understand Roja is writing a concerto for you. And the secret was out of the bag. That was the first I heard of it. And I met Roja in Rome some months later, and he showed me the draft of the first movement, and of course I was very, very excited. It's a difficult piece. Yes, it is. It's not easy, but I think it's very effective. <laughs> You've also performed quite a bit of Gottschalk, the American composer Louis Moreau Gottschalk. Yes, that was my bicentennial mm -hmm. gesture, actually. <laughs> it's an angel recording, a very nice recording. One thing I wanted to ask you, uh, when performing the, these uh, when performing music of these composers, do you listen to other performances at all? Sometimes. It depends on the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm interested in hearing my colleagues, uh, but sometimes uh, one wants a fresh viewpoint, and that was the case in the Gottschalk, mm -hmm. where I was asked by my producers not to listen to uh, other performances of this music. They wanted something very fresh. I see. Okay, then, the Russia Piano Concerto. Uh, Leonard Panario, 40 years in the music? <laughs> 40 years, 40 on years. The prof professionally on the conscience stage, yes. Okay, good enough. <laughs> 